Okay, I'm ready. Let's get to the tutorial first, and I'll tell you about the blisters later. What's up, guys? Kurt here with another 5-minute guitar lesson. Today, I'm really excited to show you how easy it is to play one of my favorite Ed Sheeran songs, Castle on the Hill. Can't wait to start, so let's get right into it. Don't forget to click here for the bonus package for this lesson, and now, let's get our ad on. So there are only four sections in this song, and what makes it even easier to learn is that there are actually only four and a half chords. We'll talk about that half chord when we get to that section in a bit, but let's start at the very beginning with the verse. When I was six years old, I broke my leg. So the clear ringing chord that you hear throughout the quiet parts of the song is a D. But we're going to focus on the chords that drive the song instead. They are D, G, B minor, and A. The strumming pattern is three down strums and two up strums. It's easy when you count along like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Get that soft touch in the verses and pre-courses by palm muting the chords. You're only really going to be palm muting the 4th, 5th, and 6th strings because you want to get that nice clear sound in the upstrokes when you strum the first 3 strings. If you're having trouble with B minor, don't worry, all guitar players struggle to play bar chords like B minor at the start. Trust me, your hand will get used to this shape. Bar chords are the hack that unlocks the secret levels of guitar. If Ed can cure his chronic stuttering, you can definitely learn bar chords. While you're getting used to shaping your hand around the guitar, there's an easier way that'll take the strain off your hand. So to simplify the B minor chord, instead of barring the entire second fret, we can not bar it and instead only play the second, third, fourth, and fifth strings. So the positioning is the exact same. It's just you're muting that first string instead of barring it down. It just makes it easier to play and you don't have to worry about the bar. So then when we put it all together, the verse is going to sound like this. Alright, now let's move on to the pre-chorus, and that's the part that begins with the super optimistic lyric, found my heart and broke it here. Found my heart and broke it here, made friends and lost them through the years. So we're going to use the same strumming pattern in the pre-chorus as we did in the verse. The chords are the only thing that's going to change this time. Thankfully, we're taking out that B minor, so your hands are going to have a chance to recover after all that work you put in the verse. So this time, the chords are going to be G, A, D, and then back to G. This part's played three times before Ed changed it up a bit, building up to the chorus by changing it a little for the I can't wait to go home part. So the fourth time, you're only going to play the G and then the A. And after that, you go into the chorus. So all together, the pre-chorus is going to sound like this. In comes the chorus. Don't worry if you're not as quick with those changes as you want to be in. Practice makes perfect. If you get this, then you actually know a lot more than you think. In just a slightly different strumming pattern, five minutes, and the E minor chord short of being able to play Desposito too. Okay, now let's move on to the really fun part of the song to play, the chorus. No palm muting here, just let the sound of the guitar carry the emotion. Now many people can sing like Ed, but if you've got any kind of voice, now's your moment to really open up and sing with some power. The chorus has the same chords we've learned before. D, G, and B minor. But with one exception. A new friend we're going to meet today who goes by the name of A7 Sus4. Third finger on the third fret of the second string and first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. You're going to play all but the lowest string. This is an open chord that sounds especially good on an acoustic guitar. 
This little chord with a long name has such a great melodic ring. Can you hear that? That's the sound of you setting hearts and coaches afire as you blaze through the chorus. Like Justin said, let's take it to the bridge and then we're nearly home. So timing for the bridge is going to be really simple. All we're going to do is play on the one, two, three, and four, and we're going to palm mute the chords. So the bridge is going to look like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then just repeat that part for the bridge. Really simple timing, but it gives it a nice minimal feel for what a bridge usually is. The palm mute should be heavier here and focus on the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings. We're dampening the sound for a dramatic effect. It balances out the high energy of the chorus. So the chords here are B minor, G, D, and our new good friend A7 sus4. If the chord names look complicated, don't let that put you off. You can find links to resources in the description below or go back and watch one of our beginner lessons. Fun fact, Ed Sheeran loves ketchup. He's actually got a bottle of the stuff tattooed on his arm. Now that's left for you to do is run through the different parts a few more times. Each time you play it, it'll get better and better. This is a great song to naturally train to play with varied yet easy to pick dynamics and techniques. Go on, give it a through run throughs before patting yourself on the back because you've just learned to play Castle on the Hill in five minutes. Hopefully you like this tutorial. If you like this song what it's all about, then check out Hopefully you like this tutorial. If you like this song what it's all about, then check out another of my favorite Ed Sheeran songs. It's called Photograph and Like Castle. Ed uses his music to tell really personal stories. And the video is pretty emotional. If you love it and want to play it, check out the five minute tutorial right here. That's today's five minute guitar tutorial. What are your favorite songs about causing mayhem or having fun as a teenager? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to click the bell to get notifications as soon as our next lesson is up. The next time you've got five minutes, I've got a song you can play. I'll see you next time. So the blister story. Me and my friends are training for an obstacle course race where it's got a run, and then an obstacle, and then another bit of a run, and then an obstacle, and so on. And it's five miles or eight kilometers wrong. And so to train for it, we were biking across the city from one playground to the next, making up obstacles like going across the monkey bars, or going up the structure or whatever. And apparently when you do enough of those, you get blisters on all your fingers. Good thing all it took is a few band-aids and I can still play guitar. And my friend said, four chords for this song, E minor, C, G, and D. If you're not comfortable with these chords, start with my beginner course and then come back to this video afterwards. Otherwise, let's get into it. The strumming pattern we're going to use for the verses is super simple. All we're doing is playing single strums before switching chords. Then we go from E minor to C to G to D. Let's try it out all together because it's really easy. I look up from the ground to see your side and to your eyes you look away from me I see there's something you're trying to hide and I reach for your hand but it's cold you pull away again and I wonder what's on your mind Then we're going to switch up the chords and the strumming moving into the pre-chorus. Starting on a C chord, this is the strumming pattern we're going to play. So down, 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 up, down, down, down. Once you've got that, our chords are going to be C to E minor, then to D twice. So all together, that sounds like this. And as you probably noticed, at the end of the pre-chorus, you hold that final D chord as we move into the chorus. Then moving into the chorus, we're going to use the strumming pattern from the pre-chorus and the chords of the verse. So this strumming pattern, 
on E minor to C to G to D. Let's try that out. Then the final section you want to know to play this entire song is the bridge. And the bridge is kind of in two parts, but we've already been over both of the parts. For the first half of the bridge, you're going to play the exact same thing we played in the verse. And then for the second half of the bridge, you're going to play the exact same thing we played in the pre-chorus. And if you can play those parts, you can play the entire song. This one's actually great for beginners because there's only four chords and some easy strumming. I hadn't even heard of this song until today, and I actually really like it. If I were a betting man, I'd say that I think this one's going to take off.